This is our hot lab. This is the place where we produce various radiopharmaceuticals. Uh, right now, we are producing three radiopharmaceuticals like F18 fluorodioxy glucose, and second is F18 sodium fluoride, and third is N13 ammonia. Uh, today, I would like to present how we synthesize F18 FDZ. Let's have a glance at our cyclotron, uh, and our cyclotron engineer will brief you about the cyclotron now. This is our RDS Eclipse Siemens. CDI Sunfield Cyclotron, Levinum EV, Levinum EV Energy. This is uh, having two types of targets. One is HP and RD. The HP target is high performance target and RD is the low performance target. The, uh, it will produce the f -aiding. That f will be converted in uh, success by success process as a FDZ. Now this is the raw material of oil and water. This oil and water after bombardment, it comes to the FID. Now we have look how the FID is converting uh, to FDZ by census process. Where the census unit is there, we will have a look. Welcome back. As I said you earlier, right now we are producing three radio pharmaceuticals. One is F18 for oxy glucose, two is F18 sodium fluoride for bone scans, and third, third is N13 ammonia for myocardial perfusion scans. Uh, today I would like to present you how we synthesis fluorodeoxy glucose. Fluorodeoxy glucose is a glucose molecule which we inject to the patients for diagnosis, staging, restaging, and monitoring response to therapy of various malignancies. Uh, once the f is produced in the cyclotron, uh, we deliver to the chemistry module uh, through, underground, through underground lines. Uh, what you are seeing is uh, Siemens Explorer FDG4 with an automated dispensing system. Uh, now I will try to uh, open the dispensing system here. Uh, this, is a, this is our dispensing system. Uh, here we dispense the doses to the patients. Uh, you can see, uh, now I am trying to open this. You can see inside. These are the manipulators. Once, uh, once the appetite is produced in the cyclotron, uh, through underground lines it reaches the, it reaches a vial called v vial here. This is the V vial. This is the V vial. This, this is called V vial because it's V in shape. Uh, once the epidin is produced in the cyclotron, it reaches the V vial. Uh, once the epidin is reached in the V vial, we'll try to measure the activity through uh, by using a capital deck here. This is a capital deck. It gives it, it gives us the activity uh, which is collected in the V vial. Actually, this will be placed in a dose calibrator here. So uh, it gives it, it gives us the activity. Uh, how much is produced? Whether it, we, whether we run, we run the bomb, we run the cyclotron for one hour, two hours. Uh, 
The production of F18 FDG is a multi-step process consisting of two main chemical reactions. One is nucleophilic F18 radiofluorination followed by an acid catalyzed hydrolysis. The first reaction incorporates the F18 label into the organic precursor 1346 trifluoromethane sulfonyl beta D manopyranase or manostriflate. And the mechanism for this reaction is an SN2 nucleophilic substitution reaction. And the second reaction is the acid catalyzed hydrolysis of acetyl protecting groups, which generates the free hydroxyl groups. Okay, now we see the synthesis process step by step. Uh, once F18 is delivered from the cyclotron, as I said you earlier, it reaches the V vial here. Once the activity is reached in the V vial, we pressurize this vial so that the activity which got collected in the V vial will be transferred to the chemistry module there. Let's have a look at the chemistry module. Uh, this is our chemistry module. Just now I'm trying to open this. This is our uh, chemistry module. This is our uh, module which we use for uh, converting fluorine 18 to fluorodeoxyglucose. Let's go uh, part by part. Uh, what you are seeing here uh, are five. Uh, there are five reagents here. This is water. This is acetone nitrile. This is the, this is manostriflate. This is cryptofix. And this is hydrochloric acid. And this is the reaction vessel. I'll just open this and I will show you. This is the this is the reaction vessel. Uh, the all the chemistry takes place in this reaction vessel only. Mm -hmm. MVP uh, seven wall, MVP six wall, MVP five, MVP four, MVP uh, three, two, and one. We use these walls to control the flows as we want as required. And these are the purification columns. Uh, this plays a key role in the synthesis procedure and what you are seeing here is called QMA uh, again we can call uh, it as hero of the synthesis because uh, whatever the activity uh, produced whether it may be 5 Curie or 6 Curie whatever it may be it get collected in the QMA this is called uh, it is it's basically quaternary methyl ammonia resin uh, this is the same thing you can see here this is the this is the QMA this is the QMA uh, once the F18 is delivered and transferred from the V-Vial to the Explorer, it gets collected in the uh, in this QMA. Uh, we can see this on the monitor there, how much activity got collected in the QMA, we can see there, because this is interfaced with a computer there, and everything is software controlled. So, uh, once the activity is uh, trapped in the QMA, uh, this is the same QMA which we are seeing here, there will be four QMAs, because we can produce four batches of FDG with, uh, by using this module, by using the Siemens module. Uh, once the activity is trapped in the QMA, it will pass a solution called cryptofix. This is the cryptofix. It will pass the solution to the QMA so that the activity uh, which is trapped in the QMA will be transferred to the reaction vessel here. This is the reaction vessel. Once the pattern is trapped in the QMA, it is delivered through the it is delivered uh, through certain walls and finally get collected in the reaction vessel. We use a solution or a chemical called cryptofix for eluting fluorine 18 from QMA to the reaction vessel. Cryptofix is, in a, is a large organic molecule called crown ether and it's a mixture of potassium carbonate and cryptofix. Potassium carbonate will make a cage around the cryptofix and it, it will not allow cryptofix to bind irreversibly to the fluoride ions. So the reactivity of the fluorine 18 will be maximized. The cryptofix plays a key role here because it helps us in eluting from the a QMA one and second is it strips the fluoride, fluoride ion from the QMA number one and number two is it will maximize the reactivity of the fluorine 18 so that ultimately will get more fluorodeoxy glucose. Once the F18 reaches the reaction vessel, uh, the real uh, synthesis starts now. We have a couple of uh, evaporations takes place here. In the first evaporation, the water will be ma water will be boiled off to the maximum extent uh, at, at, certain uh, at certain temperatures. Once the uh, water is boiled off. But still we will be having some water remnant in the reaction vessel. So we will use a, uh, this process is called azeotropic distillation. Uh, why azeotropic distillation? Why cannot we boil off water by, uh, by heating extensively? If we heat reaction vessel extensively, it leads to the decomposition of the fluorodeoxyl glucose, uh, by which we will be landed with very low yield. So azeotropic distillation is, uh, what happens during azeotropic distillation is, we will boil off water at lower temperatures. Uh, the, the boiling point of water is usually 100 degrees centigrade, but we have to boil off water at a temperature nearly 80 degrees centigrade. 
for that what we are doing what we are doing here is we are just adding H2O nitrile to the water so that the boiling point of water comes down to 81.6 degree 